trying to figure out, like, what exactly is the expectation of a pivot to begin with? What, what happens? They, they raise rates 75 basis points in a week, and then they raise rates 75 basis they say, points no, in September? No, 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 And then no. all of a sudden, it's they signaling. just pivot and suggest, no, no, no. or they signal, or they, they signal that that's kind of it for a while? They say the risks are now more balanced. Is that what it is? And they say the risks are now more balanced, and then a meeting or two later, they say, okay, actually, now the, the risk is, they, not in these words, but now the risk is more to the downside and that they're going to worry more about employment. And we but are that's so like far so away far. from 2% yeah. inflation. Yeah. Right. Right. So far away. So they, who knows if they're going to pivot in September. They may keep going, especially if those numbers keep coming in. Even if we've seen peak inflation, which we probably have, it's still very, very high. Anastasia mentioned wages and rents, and those are much stickier parts of inflation. And so they're going to just keep on raising who knows, 50, 75, what's the time frame? But that's kind of my point, too. Yeah. I, that, I think you that's heard Solomon point. say it's so, entrenched. You, you heard Solomon say it's entrenched. He's not the only person using that word. When it becomes entrenched, then the fear is the wage price spiral. And I'm going to tell you one other thing about this job market lie that I don't think is very well understood. In the pre-COVID world, which we are not going back to and can no longer rest on um, the, the, the old uh, conventions of, in the pre-COVID world, if you put out a job opening, like if you said we are physically hiring right now, it made sense. We needed somebody to come work. Here's the job opening. Come take the job. We close out the job opening. In the post-COVID world, you have companies posting five, seven, ten jobs. They're remote. It's not quite one-to-one. -one. And I don't know that we can rest on those laurels, that data of there being so much room to hire that could turn really quickly. You're seeing it in the headlines, in tech, in communications, in consumer discretionary, in e-commerce, in social media, in crypto. It's not that big of a leap to say all of a sudden the Fed could get worried about the job market. We're nowhere near it yet. I understand that. Um, but again, that's the kind of thing where I think we're maybe a little bit too confident in how many open jobs there are that might not really actually feel, be there. Anastasia, I feel like Scott, the, the pivoters, yeah. if you want to call them the pivoters, this cohort <laughs> of people who are, who are <laughs> bullish later in the year because they think the Fed is going to make this pivot, act as though the Fed is going to say in September, OK, we did our 75 again, and because inflation has peaked, we're good. And we're just going to take yeah. it a wait and see. But as Steph said, we are so far above 2%, and it's going to take a long time to get back to that level that I don't know if that's a foolhardy sort of thing to, to, to place your bets on like some of the most bullish people are. I think that's right, Scott. I think that's the biggest risk in the market right now is that everybody expects the Fed to pause and get inflation out of control, you know, in the next three months and pause around 3.6, 3.8% interest rate. But it is really challenging to resolve some of the bottleneck issues that we have. We talk about the shelter inflation. I am really concerned about that one. I mean, think about the lack of inventory of housing. Think about the fact that the multifamily residential vacancy rate is at 2.6%. I mean, this is one of the lowest numbers that we've seen. So how exactly are you going to bring down shelter inflation very quickly? That's 30% of the CPI basket. Then we talk about energy prices. I think they can probably stabilize around $90 or $100 levels, which is good for headline inflation, but it's still almost $100 a barrel. The Fed cannot fix that quickly. So I think that's the biggest risk in the market is that we get to September and they have not done enough to bring down inflation. The other thing that I would say, and I am in a slowdown camp as well. I think perhaps we still have a path to a soft landing, but the risk to that view is that maybe given the supply constraints that we have, they need to bring down demand much more than they were previously expected because 2% at this point is a pipe dream. It is not in sight yet. Mm -hmm. So having said that, Scott, I will just say one positive thing about this is most people see this recession coming. Most people are starting to price it in. The economic variables say that there's a 43% risk of a recession in the next year. The markets say there's 50 or 60% risk. So I think the markets maybe have gone a long way to pricing this recession.